Outposts in Starfield can be a really useful and fun part of the game but can also feel quite daunting and complicated when you first start looking at them. Today I'm going to run through all the basics you need to know to get a couple of very simple outposts up and running and sending resources to each other without needing a huge amount of upfront resources, credits or levels. Once I've gone through some key info you need to know before you start, we will then go through step by step showing you the entire process. Being able to do even these basics will help you gain thousands of easy resources which you can use to research things, craft gear, farm XP or sell for credits to fund your ship building habits. You can also use these resources to easily create more outposts or to rapidly expand your existing ones into awesome living, storage and display areas which are frankly much better than some of the rubbish houses in the game that cost you hundreds of thousands of credits. I'll put a full chapter listing down below so feel free to just skip to the step by step step build if you don't feel you need the extra info. So in order to build a basic outpost you're going to need a few different resources. Chances are you've already got some accumulated but if you need any more you can either gather these by mining, farming plants and killing animals or usually the easiest way is to just go and buy them. Various vendors across the galaxy sell the resources you'll need including the UC distribution center in the commercial district of New Atlantis, Shepherd's General Store in Aquila City and the UC Exchange in Sidonia on Mars. The resources you'll need are broken down into several categories and you'll be able to buy all of these types from these vendors. Inorganic resources are things like iron, lead and nickel and these are things that you can find by mining. Organic resources are things like sealant, adhesive and polymer which can be found from plants and animals and components are things like zero wire and adaptive frames which can be crafted by the player at an industrial workbench using resources. What well, you're mostly going to need to get started it is a good pile of iron and aluminium or aluminum as we'll call it from now on since it seems space was colonized by Americans. On top of those the other key things you'll need for getting the basic set up are nickel, copper, beryllium, cobalt, tungsten, titanium and lead as well as some sealant, adaptive frames and a little zero wire. Now that might sound a little daunting but you don't need much of all of those initially. This entire build of two connected basic outposts across two different planets uses roughly 160 iron and 140 aluminum and less than 20 of all the other resources mentioned. And keep in mind that your outposts will very quickly be producing the very resources you actually need. If the vendors don't have the things you want, remember you can reset their inventories by sitting or sleeping and waiting for 48 hours of universal time. You can also mark outpost structures and objects as tracked when you're in the outpost builder mode and it will mark the resources you need when in a shop. But this can get a little confusing if you also have research and crafting projects tracked as well so I tend to just make a note of the things that I need. To find the best spot for your outpost you'll need to click around on a bunch of different planets and moons and take a look at the resources they have on them. Depending on your scanning at skill level you'll be able to show where on each planet these resources can be found in abundance but keep in mind this doesn't mean that only that resource is found there it'll just be more common. Planets with an extreme environment can only have outposts built on them if you've leveled your planetary habitation skill and leveling this skill will also increase the total number of outposts you can build. Leveling the outpost engineering skill will unlock more things you can research and then build in your outposts but today we're just going to be keeping it pretty simple. Really what you want to look for when starting out is a location or locations with iron and aluminum and preferably some of the other resources listed earlier. There are planets around where you can find iron and aluminum together such as Kodos in the Cheyen system, one of Aquila's moons, or Tau Ceti 3b, a moon of Tau Ceti 3 in the Tau Ceti system. But as it's very easy to send resources automatically between outposts, I wouldn't get too hung up on spending ages making it essential that you have iron and aluminum in the same outpost. Especially if you find a great location with lots of other useful resources, just as long as you can find both of those main two in the same system. Resources can be sent between different systems, but it's a little more complicated and we won't be looking at that today. Landing on the edge edge of biomes can be a good way to find a mix of resources and really the goal is to find as many useful resources in one outpost location as possible. This can range from just one resource to potentially five, six or even seven in one outpost location if you're lucky or if you have the patience to spend enough time searching. Find yourself a spot to land and you can then run around and see what resources are available in that area. The easiest way to do this is to get your scanner out and select the outpost option and then just move around with the outpost 
outpost beacon on the ground and it will show you in the top left of the screen exactly what resources can be extracted if you place the beacon in that location. If you want to speed this process up then try taking some amp and you'll run a lot faster. If there doesn't seem to be much about after you've had a bit of a search try a different landing location on that planet and try and find borders between biomes such as plains going into mountains and you can often find unusual combinations of multiple resources there. The landing sites are procedurally generated so there isn't much point trying to find my exact outpost locations but with a bit of searching you can probably find the same things I did in a similar area. Remember you don't have to carry all the materials you need on you you'll be able to access your ship's inventory when outpost building even if you parked it miles away. Today we're going to be building in the Jaffa system partly because it has great resources and partly also because it has a great name. I've actually got a couple of outposts there already so we're just going to try and replicate the basics of what those already do. Our first main outpost has three great resources in it, iron, lead and tungsten and our second smaller outpost is just going to feed us aluminum for the time being. So here we are ready to build our first outpost. This is located on a Jaffa 7B, it's one of the moons around a Jaffa 7 surprisingly in the Jaffa system. This is a planet with loads of different resources. I've already got another base here. We're going to do a new one so I can show you from scratch but it's got iron, tungsten, lead, titanium and all sorts of things knocking around. The area that we're exploring is kind of around here. We're sort of around the kind of going for edge of mountains slash sandy desert slash volcanic sort of area. There's a lot of different biomes in this small area. You can see there's areas where there's iron, there's areas where there's titanium, there's areas where there's tungsten and all sorts of other things in this small area. This little bit that we found here, if we open up our scanner and go to outpost, we get an outpost beacon. And by placing this, this will start our first outpost. You can see up in the top left, it says the resources available, iron, tungsten and water. If I actually move it over this way a bit, we get lead as well. So we're going to place it here and that's going to give us three different resources that we want to mine. Once we've popped this down, you can see in the bottom right, we can press the control to toggle view and then we can zoom that out and you can see the boundary within which we can build our outpost. This yellow line here dictates the edge of the area where we can build and where we can extract resources. So what we want to do first to start extracting some resources and processing them is opening the build menu. You can see the list of extractors here. It's only going to show ones that are available for the resources you have in that area. So we can see iron and lead and tungsten and also water vapor if you wanted to do that. When you select them it will highlight that resource so you can see the iron selected here the lead is over here and there's some tungsten down here i'm just going to go ahead and place one of each of these extractors in the appropriate areas and you can see now on the bottom right it says power needed 15 we don't have any power at the moment so if we go over one tab on our little list of things we can buy you can see different power options we're just going to go with solar array here they produce six power on this planet that can vary down to planets where you can't build them at all or they just produce two all the way up to eight on blade infernos. We need 15 power so we're going to build three of these to cover that and just chuck those out the way here. Placing them like this will just power all of these extractors automatically. You don't have to wire them in. You can if you want. If you hover over them you can see it says in the down on the bottom A to move or hold for extras. If you hold gives you the option to create a wire which you could plug into that extractor. You could use this by placing maybe a powered switch in between them. You could run a wire from the solar panel into the power switch and then again into the extractor and that allow you to manually turn this extractor on and off or a group of extractors if you so wished. We're not really going to cover any of that today though it's a little bit more complicated but just so you're aware that that exists. So what we have now is three extractors which are fully powered. You can see down in the bottom right there's total power 18, needed power 15, 4.44 production per minute. By the way it doesn't seem to make any difference if I move this tungsten one to be right on the edge so it's only sort of half covering the tungsten area it doesn't seem to make any difference to the production value what does make a difference to your output though is the survey data you have on that planet if you've got 100 survey data which you can see i have here you actually get a boost to your production on that planet so it's well worth doing and it can make planets with a bit less stuff on them and easier to survey a bit more appealing sometimes to build an outpost if you don't want to run around trying to find 10 different animals and 10 different types of plant that you need to scan before you get that boost 
So if we go up to one of our extractors here, you can see that this should be doing the business. It's now slowly filling up with tungsten. It's got two in there at the moment, but this doesn't have a very big storage capacity. It can only store 12 mass. What we want to do is send all that lovely tungsten into some other containers. So if we open up our build menu, which by the way, you can do either by walking back up to the outpost beacon, or if you just open your scanner when within the outpost zone and then press the outpost button again, it will open your build mode from wherever you are. What we're going to do is go back into the bird's eye view and then we're going to go to storage and we're going to go to this storage solid container. If you're extracting liquid resources, there's one for them. Gas resources, there's one for gas. Warehouses for crafted components and the transfer container is for transferring stuff between your outpost and your ship. We're just going to build these small storage containers to keep things very, very simple. We're going to put two down for each of our extractors. We're just going to stack them on top of each other like this. It's going to look a bit rough and ready, but it's just so you can see quite easy what is going on here without worrying about making it all look nice. So we've got these storage containers here at the moment. They're not really doing anything, but we can actually automate resources going from these extractors into them. What we need to do is hover over the extractor in build mode. You can see down the bottom right, it says create output link. We're going to click that. Then we get this red line and then we're going to select that onto these containers. You might find it easier to make sure you're getting the right one going back into this view. You can see we're trying to connect it to the top one or the bottom one. We want it to go to the top one. So we press create output link again and that is now connected what we can then do is create output link from this container see we get another red line we could connect it here but what we're going to do is just connect it to this one underneath and what is going to happen now is all the tungsten from this extractor is going to go from the extractor into this top box and then into this bottom box and this bottom box should store all of our tungsten once it fills up it will then fill up this second box as you level up your skills you can build bigger storage boxes than this you can also scale this as much as you want pretty much and these are very cheap to build. They use some very basic resources that you're, we're already pretty much getting. Aluminum, iron, and adaptive frames. Adaptive frames is just iron and aluminum crafted out of workbench. And we're soon going to have plenty of iron and plenty of aluminum once we do the other base. So what we want to do is just quickly chuck down some output links from our other extractors into these crates in exactly the same way that we've done already. And now we've got our lead going into this middle box, our iron going into this one on the end here, and then all our tungsten going into this container here. Before we head off to the other outpost where we're going to mine some aluminum and send it automatically over here, we just want to build a couple more quick things. First up, we are going to go over to the miscellaneous tab and build a cargo link. This is the structure we're going to build one of at each outpost, and this is what's going to send the aluminum between the other base to this one. It's pretty massive, but it's actually pretty cheap to build considering it's mostly pretty basic resources we're going to put that down there and then we're also going to build the landing pad with ship builder which is really useful and again it's quite big but it doesn't actually really use very much in the way of resources so if i jump out of build mode for a second i'll show you exactly why this is so good first off it means when we come back here and land we'll actually land our ship on this pad rather than off over there in the desert somewhere so it's right next to you at your base as well as that it also has this little terminal you can use which works just like any other ship vendor out in the world you can view modify your ships you can buy new ships you can register your ships you can sell them you can do all the stuff you can at those other locations and it has a pretty good inventory of items you can add to your ships it doesn't have everything but it does have quite a lot compared to some of the other vendors in the game our cargo link we're not going to worry about too much for now we're going to go over to the other outpost location now get that set up and when we come back here we should be pretty much good to go so the other outpost we're doing in the jaffa system is is over here on Jaffa 4A. This moon has aluminium, helium 3, and beryllium, but we're just interested in the alum aluminum for the time being. I've already got the outpost marker down. You can see it's called Jaffa Test 2, so we're just going to go and land there. And by the way, if you want to delete or rename an outpost, you just go up to the beacon here. You see you can tap to rename it here. Or if you hold the button down, you can actually delete the outpost and remove it completely. So this is just a blank outpost. We haven't built anything here yet. It's a pretty desolate area. If we open up our build mode, though, and then go to the extractors, you can see we can do aluminum or beryllium. We're not too worried about beryllium for the minute. It is useful, but just for today's video, we are going to place an aluminum extractor. That can just go over here. Then we need to give it some power 
power. We're going to go with solar here. You can see it only actually generates four energy on this planet because it's darker. So we're going to need two of those to power this extractor. So we'll plonk those down there to get our power. Then we're not going to worry about any storage for this extractor. It's just going to send the aluminum straight off planet. So what we're going to do is go all the way over to miscellaneous, go to cargo link again, and then stick one of these down wherever we like. And that is all we are going to build at this location. What we do need to do though is create an output link between this extractor and the cargo link. So you can see the cargo link has these two boxes on it, these two storage containers. There's the green one, which is for incoming cargo, and there is the red one, which is for outgoing cargo. So what we need to do is jump back into build mode. We can then highlight the extractor, select create output link, get our little red line, and then bring it over to the red container and create the output link. You can also hover over these, by the way, you can see in the top left, it says cargo link outgoing, cargo link incoming, and gives you a bit more information. This cargo link is specifically for sending things between the same system. If you wanted to send things in a different system, you'd have to use this second cargo link, which requires helium three as fuel. It's not too hard to get, but we'll save that for another video when we cover things that are a little more complicated. So what we've got here is this extractor automatically sending aluminum into this container. And then what we need to do to activate this, you can see these little red lights means we, this isn't active or doing anything at the moment. What we want to do is go up to the little control console and then set up the cargo link. You can see we've got outgoing resources, aluminum already in the left there, but nothing actually set up. It's not a very clear menu of what is actually going on here, but what you basically need to do is this outpost in the middle is another cargo link I have without anything attached to it on another outpost. That's my outpost we were just at a minute ago. If I then scroll down to cargo link, it says in the bottom right, you can see I can select that. If I select it, current link, none, new link, Jaffa, blah, blah, blah. Select that. The link has been created. We've got a nice green icon. And in the bottom left, you can see it says cargo ship zero of 300. So what will now happen is periodically a ship will come along and pick up the aluminum, which is in there. There's only three of it at the moment, but that will soon add up. We've got these little flashing lights that say that there's a ship on its way in. And when it's just active, but there's not a ship on its way they'll just be green but red bad green or flashing yellow good there's the ship coming in to pick out the three al aluminum that we've got here which does seem a little excessive but we'll now go and head back to the other base and we'll see everything's getting on so now we're back at the first base. You can see my ship has actually landed here now. So we've got the ship right where we need it to be. And what we just need to do is configure the cargo link from this end. At the moment, it's just going to dump the aluminum into the incoming container here. What we want to do is create a storage box that is going to send it into automatically. So if we go back into build mode, we can do that exactly the same way we did for these extractors here. We'll just put a couple of boxes down right here. And then we can see this green one here is the incoming. The red is the outgoing. So if we go create output link from the green one and then a ship magically appears and connect that with the box there and then connect that box with the one below it then whenever some aluminum gets dumped by that ship into those containers it will then automatically go into these boxes just like these other things i'm not sure it would have actually brought some it has for aluminum in there already now not very much aluminum you might think and not very much of the other stuff as well so what we're going to do is we're going to build a hab as this isn't really much of a base at the moment it's just a load of utility structures and we haven't actually made ourselves a home so what we're going to do very quickly is open our build menu and we're going to go along to the structures tab and this is basically all of the different living areas that you can build and they have different variations if you scroll down and then use the buttons to move left and right you can look at the different varieties of these ones i really like this round hydroponic hab at the moment so we're going to stick one of these down we'll just plonk it here wherever we can make it kind of tall which i quite like and what you can also do if you put one next to it is you can it will automatically connect them to each other so if we find a space where it'll actually go there we go you can put two of those there and you could even chain these along and put them all sorts of places so they go next to each other we don't have enough resources to do that so we won't worry too much and what you can do with these habs is you can put your workbenches beds sofas tables crew areas and all sorts of stuff inside them by the way when you're crafting your outpost here you will automatically access the inventory of all of this stored stuff in containers in your base that was using up the aluminum there whilst I was making those things and you'll also access your ship's inventory whilst you're crafting things in the outpost you don't have to take everything out of your ship and carry it around in your pocket so what we're going to do here is just go and have a quick rest to get some more aluminum in so we can build a couple more things you can see on this planet is actually a weird sort of time thing going on so if I sleep for 24 hours that's the 110 hours 
hours of universal time, which means we'll have absolutely tons of resources. We're not quite going to sleep for that long. We just want it to be morning so it's nice and bright, and then we'll check back in and build a couple more things. So it's a bright new day and you can see that our containers here are now absolutely full of stuff. There's basically max capacity of tungsten, iron and lead in these three containers here. There's like 200 of each thing. Once another one of these ships has arrived and brought all the aluminum from the other base, we should see a similar amount brought in and filling up these containers here. So you can see now we've waited for another ship to come in. It's brought all the aluminum that's been harvested from the other place. We've got 150 in here and the bottom one is going to be full up as well. And I imagine the output container up there, it's probably pretty full as well. So we'll take a little bit of this. By the way, you can scroll on this a lot quicker on a controller by using RB and LB. And then if we jump back into build mode, we're going to continue with our little hab area. So we need to build an outpost airlock in order to actually get inside these, even if it's an area where you can actually breathe the atmosphere you still have to have an airlock which is a little bit annoying so we'll stick one of those down there and then we can get inside so now we're inside if i go back into build mode you can see we actually get some options on how to change things if we want if it goes yellow like this it says change down in the bottom right and i press the button and it gives us these different entrance ways we can have these big wide ones we can have no connection at all so they're just independent or we can just have this little thin doorway if we bring up the menu here there's all sorts of stuff we can place inside all the different benches industrial workbench cooking station etc your goal is going to be to have all of these different benches in your main base you can craft all different stuff industrial workbench particularly useful for outposts and the research lab going to be useful as well the industrial workbench is handy because it allows you to craft components you might need to build more stuff like the adaptive frames or the magnets or polytextiles and zero wire and all these kinds of different things that you can craft from the raw resources that you're mining that you might use to make other things within your outpost on top of those, you can also build turrets and defenses. You can build defensive robots if you get your level up high enough. At the moment, these robots that I can build here actually increase the efficiency of your outpost rather than fighting. You can get attacked by spacers. I haven't had it happen yet, but it is a thing that can happen. And of course, you can build all sorts of cosmetic stuff to decorate the hab however you like. It's worth having, obviously, a bed in there if you want to rest and skip some time or just get some health back, get your XP boost, then chuck a bed down. There's all sorts of storage options. You can play storage boxes safes crates and tons of other things you can go through in your own time the displays tab has stuff like mannequins and putting armor spacesuits on you can get helmet display cases weapon racks and even data slate displays if you have a data slate you want to display particularly. One last useful thing that we're going to place here is the crew station. This allows you to assign crew to this outpost. So if we plonk this down here and then exit build mode for a moment, I can go down to my ship menu here, press the button at the bottom for crew, which is Y on controller. And you can see my different people here. If I select my adoring fan, I can chuck him down onto outpost three here and he'll now be assigned to this base. The next time I've gone and come back, he will be here. I'm not exactly sure what they actually do i've got hella and lynn assigned to my main outpost they have outpost engineering and outpost management i'm not sure it's actually doing anything i guess it's giving us it some sort of boost but they're both there and they seem you know fairly happy with being abandoned on a pretty isolated base on a planet in the middle of nowhere there's lots of other useful and cool little things you can build in this menu you can go through that at your own time it doesn't really need explaining mission boards self-service bounty clearance and other stuff like that some of the more complicated stuff that i'm not going to go through in this video today Day is some of the automated things you can build builders which are fabricators so these if you scroll through the different variants you can see on the left there it produces different things isotopic coolant mag pressure tank and these are basically you can connect these so your resources automatically plug into this and then it will create stuff it's kind of an automatic workbench so this workbench we built here it can do the stuff that does but automatically so it can create tons of adaptive frames or whatever for you or if you make the compound fabricator it makes even more more complicated stuff and you can basically then automate creating all these cool components which you can then use to build things or go and sell them for tons and tons of money or if you wanted you could just get loads of resource and then you could craft them manually yourself on the bench and get loads and loads of xp there's also lots more advanced stuff you can unlock as you level up your skills but i'll cover that and more in a more advanced tips and tricks video at a later date so that's everything for today hopefully that's covered all of the basics that you need to know to get up and running and get yourself loaded of resources nice and easily if you've enjoyed the video i've got loads of other tips and guides on starfield so do go and check them out and drop a like and subscribe as well thanks so much for watching my name's ben we are the beard guys and i'll see you next time